Now regarding this amiodarone, like we have discussed many adverse effects. Now let me tell you the adverse effects of amiodarone in the form of a mnemonic. Right, let me tell you the adverse effects of this particular amiodarone in the form of a mnemonic. The mnemonic is the periphery right the periphery of my lung and liver right the periphery of my lung and liver and even cornea right the periphery of my lung liver and Cornea is photosensitive. Right? It is photosensitive. This is the mnemonic. Now, you take the word T. T stands for the thyroid related disorder. This amiodarone, it will cause hypo or hyperthyroidism right it will cause hypo or hyperthyroidism you take the word p periphery so that is it will cause peripheral neuropathy you take the word m it will cause myocardial depression Right, it will cause myocardial depression and you take the word lung that is it will cause pulmonary fibrosis or lung fibrosis and you take L that is it will cause liver toxicity right that is it will cause the liver toxicity right next you take the word C C stands for that is cornea that is corneal micro deposits. Right, corneal micro deposits, and you take the word P that is photosensitive, right? So it has the adverse effect of photosensitivity, right? Photosensitivity, all right. So these are the adverse effects associated with the amiodarone. Now, now after having discussed about the amiodarone. Let me discuss about the other antiarrhythmic drug that is dronedarone. Right, another antiarrhythmic drug that is dronedarone. Now, if you take this particular dronedarone, remember it is similar to that of amiodarone, but the difference is the dronedarone is non iodinated compound. Right, dronedarone. It is one of the non iodinated compound in the sense this particular dronedarone does not contain iodine right it is one of the non iodinated compound now because it is non iodinated compound the dronedarone there is very fewer adverse effects not only that the dronedarone is also less efficacious than amiodarone okay so it has few adverse effects and the other important point is it is less efficacious right it is less efficacious than right less efficacious than amiodarone Next, now where is this dronedarone given? Dronedarone, it is indicated for the atrial fibrillation, right, indicated for atrial fibrillation and as well as the atrial flutter, right, it is indicated for atrial fibrillation and as well as atrial flutter. Now, not only that, the other advantage of the dronedarone is 
it has lesser incidence of the pulmonary fibrosis, peripheral neuropathy and hypothyroidism, right? Dronadarone, it is having lesser incidence of pulmonary fibrosis, right? Lesser incidence of the peripheral neuropathy and the pulmonary fibrosis and peripheral neuropathy of this dronadarone is less compared to that of amiodarone, right? It is less compared to that of amiodarone. Next. Now, let me tell you another important agent in class 3. The other important agent is vernacalant, right? The other important agent is vernacalant. Now, if you take this particular vernacalant, what is this? This vernacalant, it is a multi-ion channel blocker, right? Because it is a multi-ion channel blocker, it will selectively prolong the atrial refractory period without affecting the ventricles, okay? So, what is this vernacalant is? This is one of the multi-ion channel blocker, right? This is one of the multi-ion channel blocker and this particular vernacalant it will prolong, that is, it selectively prolongs right, it selectively prolongs the atrial refractory period alright, it selectively prolongs the atrial refractory period and this vernacalant Right, this vernacalant, it does not affect the ventricle, right, without affecting the ventricles, right, without affecting the ventricles. Now, because it is selectively prolonging the atrial refractory period, this vernacalant is indicated for converting atrial fibrillation of short duration to sinus rhythm, right? So, what does this vernacalant do is, it will convert the atrial fibrillation of short duration. That means, short duration means atrial fibrillation of less than 7 days. So, it is indicated for converting the atrial fibrillation of short duration to sinus rhythm. right to sinus rhythm. Now, the other important point regarding the vernacalant is, vernacalant it has little or no proarrhythmic action, right, it has little or no proarrhythmic action, right, that is the important point regarding the vernacalant, right. So, if you take this particular dronadarone, Remember, this is one of the non-iodinated agent. It does not contain iodine. So, it has very fewer side effects, but also it is less efficacious than amiodarone. And it is indicated for atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. And this dronadarone, it has lesser incidence of pulmonary fibrosis, peripheral neuropathy and hypothyroidism than the amiodarone. The other important agent here is vernacalant. If you take the vernacalant, it is one of the multi-ion channel blocker that selectively prolongs the atrial refractory period without affecting the ventricles. And this vernacalant, it is indicated for converting the atrial fibrillation of short duration to sinus rhythm. And this vernacalant, it has little or no proarrhythmic action. Now, let me discuss another class 3 agent that is bretilium. Right, another class 3 agent that is bretilium. So, if you take this particular bretilium, this is an adrenergic neuron blocking drug. Right, this is one of the adrenergic neuron 
blocking drug all right now where is this particular bretillium used remember bretillium it is used only parentally for arrhythmias right it is used only parentally for right it is used pa only parentally for arrhythmias and uh, the major adverse effect of the bretillium is it will cause what is called as postural hypotension right this bretillium will cause what is called as the postural hypotension now after having discussed about the bretillium we have another important agent that is sotalol right another important agent that is sotalol now if you take this sotalol sotalol it is a non selective lipid insoluble beta blocker right it is a non selective beta blocker right it is a non selective beta blocker and this particular sotalol it is lipid insoluble right it is lipid insoluble beta blocker now this particular sotalol it has actions of both class 2 as well as class 3 anti arrhythmic agents right this sotalol it has the actions of both class 2 as well as class 3 anti arrhythmic agents right it has the actions of both class 2 as well as class 3 anti arrhythmic agents now where is this particular sotalol indicated so if you see the indications of sotalol it is indicated for the treatment of atrial or ventricular tachycardias and it is also useful for av nodal reentrant tachycardias all right so if you take the indications of sotalol this sotalol it is indicated for atrial or ventricular arrhythmias and not only that it is also indicated for av reentrant arrhythmias that is atrioventricular reentrant arrhythmias so that is the place where we use this sotalol now after this sotalol we have another important class 3 agent that is ibutalide right another important class 3 agent that is ibutalide now if you take this ibutalide ibutalide is a structural analog of sotalol okay ibutalide it is the structural analog of sotalol but a point is it is only a structural analog of sotalol but this particular ibutalide it has no beta blocking property right it has no beta blocking property right it has no beta blocking property and this particular ibutalide it is used for the treatment of atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter by intravenous route only so ibutalide it is given by iv route only and it is given in the treatment of atrial fibrillation and as well as the atrial flutter right given in the treatment of atrial fibrillation and as well as the atrial flutter now if you take this particular ibutalide remember ibutalide is the only anti arrhythmic agent currently approved by the fda for the acute conversion of atrial fibrillation to sinus rhythm okay so it is currently approved drug by the fda for 
acute conversion right for the acute conversion of the atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter to the normal sinus rhythm right and you take the other drugs other drugs used in atrial fibrillation uh, they also control the ventricular rate whereas the point about the abutilide is it is approved by the FDA for the acute conversion of atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter to the sinus rhythm whereas the other agents they are used in atrial fibrillation they are for controlling the ventricular rate right for controlling the ventricular rate so if you take the other drugs other drugs which are used right other drugs which are used in atrial fibrillation are are for controlling right for controlling the ventricular rate right so these are the important class 3 agents so if you take this particular britilium this is an adrenergic neuron blocking drugs used only parenterally for arrhythmias and the major adverse effect of this britilium is the postural hypotension and you have another important class 3 agent that is sotalol sotalol is a non selective lipid insoluble beta blocker and it has the actions of both class 2 as well as class 3 anti arrhythmic agents and where is this indicated indications are in case of atrial or ventricular tachyarrhythmias and it is also indicated in case of av reentrant arrhythmias now if you take ibutalite ibutalite it is given intravenously only and it is the structural analog of sotalol but it has no beta blocking property and if you take this ibutalite ibutalite is the only anti arrhythmic agent currently approved by fda for the acute conversion of atrial fibrillation to normal sinus rhythm whereas other drugs used in atrial fibrillation are for controlling the ventricular rate so this is completely about the discussion on the class 3 agents